Well, welcome everybody. What a great day this is. This is the day the Lord has made, as Greg said last week. Uh, hi, Greg and Joanne. Really looking forward to you guys getting back to Australia. Love you guys. We serve a risen Saviour. He's in the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the only way. You know, this virus, it's attacked the world and we're seeing so many things being shut down. But I want to say this morning that God can never be shut down. He's still moving by His Spirit. He's still touching people. People are being saved daily, those that should be saved. There's a move of the Spirit that's going on. And, you know, though we're seeing a lot of things that are shut down, schools and churches and everything else, the church of the living God continues to go on and on and on and on. God is still moving, and I'm excited to be part of that move of God today. And all you have to do is open up your heart and let the King of Glory come in. And he will touch you, he will move over your life, he will encourage you, he will speak to you, he will uh, gather you uh, to himself. He, he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever imagine or think. He wants to build an amazing church where the gates of hell will not prevail against it. God is on the throne, amen. So I'm excited today, I don't know about you, but let's pray. Father, we give you all the praise today. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would come in your power and in your authority. We take authority over every lie of Satan. We take authority over fear, despair, discouragement, all the things that the enemy is trying to pour out upon the nations of the world. Father, we thank you that your word is alive and it is powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's working mightily in us. Lord, you're building your church, you're moving by your spirit. And Lord, we just want to be part of this great end time revival. We want to be part of your move that you're doing in this hour that we're living in right now. And Lord, we want to serve our generation. We want to serve this people, Lord. We want to be able to be a voice of faith and encouragement and excitement. And Lord, we'll just give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You see, from Genesis to Revelation, uh, we see... Satan doing all he can to try to stop the move of God, to try to stop the plan of God, to try to stop what God is doing. But I want to tell you, friends, he's never won a battle yet. He's never really succeeded. Uh, you know, Satan is the master of the skies and deception. He's, in a, he's like he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. In Matthew 24, 24, it says, For false Christ." And false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Uh, he will try to disguise himself even as an angel of light. 1 Peter 5.8, it says, Satan goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He goes around trying to uh, take the truth and distort it. Try to cause lies to enter into the hearts of men and women. We see this right throughout the time and the history of humanity. As the enemy comes in and pours in his lies, pours in his discouragement, and people walk away, and people you know, get even wrong doctrines, wrong theology, wrong theory, wrong concepts. And I want to tell you that I believe that the Spirit of God is moving mightily, and He's doing something in our midst. You know, when it says that there's going to come a great shaking, and a lot of things that we've most surely put our feet on, and that perhaps if it's sand, in this shaking we'll realize that, hey, I cannot trust that anymore. And there's a seeking, there's a going after God like never before. People want to know the truth. People want to know the power. People want to know the anointing. They want to know the victory of the cross of Calvary. And, and that is so, so very, very exciting. Satan goes around like a roaring lion, seeking him he may devour. And I know I've said this many, many times, but Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He goes around seeking whom he may empower. Today, God's not just running around playing church. He's wanting to empower his church. He's wanting to raise people up. He wants to fill you again with the mighty power of God. He wants the anointing to come all over your life. He wants to see you doing signs and wonders and miracles. He wants to see you moving in the power. Oh man, I, I think that is so amazing because that is God's heart. That is what God wants to do. You know, God wants to empower us. Satan is the deceiver. Jesus is the deliverer. 
Satan can only devour those who really don't know the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. He can only devour those who do not know who they are in Christ Jesus. See, there's a lot of people who have a form of God. They, with their mouths they praise Him, but their hearts are far from Him. They have a form of godliness, but, but there's no power in them. Jesus said in the book of Acts 1.8, it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Friend, I don't, I'm just not a power freak. I'm not just, just obviously with this body uh, that I'm not a power freak. But I want to tell you that God wants to give us power that we can resist the temptations of the world, the temptations of the devil. He can only devour you if, if you really don't know who you are, if you don't understand the power that God has given to us, power over all the works of Satan. What an amazing statement. See, the disciples, when, when the power of God came upon them, and they went out there and they started to preach the truth. You see, the truth cut across the doctrine and the philosophy of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They rose up against this truth. They did not want to hear the truth. They were so locked into what they believed and, and what they thought was right. They had been dece deceived. The devourer had come in to devour them, to take away the truth, to take away the anointing, to take away their purpose, the plan that God had for them, to, lead, to lead a group of people in triumph and in victory, that they would overcome all the works of Satan. You see, the, 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 rebellion, the, 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 the religious leaders rebelled when they heard the, the, this new church rising up and saying uh, that Jesus has risen from the dead. They started to preach Jesus the Messiah. Man, they were all looking for a Messiah, but they just didn't recognize him when he came. Because you see, their doctrines and their theology had blinded their eyes. There's a lot of things that happen in the church today when God starts to move. It's our doctrines and it's our theology that blinds our eyes to the truth. And instead of walking with God, we start to fight against what God's wanting to do. Not deliberately, not wanting to, but because of the teachings of the things that are in our mind. They started to preach uh, that Jesus was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And these people, they rose up against it. These religious leaders rose up against it. It wasn't the religious leaders themselves. It was the spirit of the devil. It was the spirit of the enemy that was working in them. All they needed was to be born again. All they needed to do was to be able to somehow or other open their hearts. You see, it's the simplicity of the gospel that confounds the wise. And sometimes we think that we've just got to be able to, you know, get every, all our ducks in a row or something like that. No, friend, you, all you need to do is have a heart that is open to the things of God. And, and, and even in our ignorance, we can say, God, you know I love you, God, I want to serve you. God, will you open my eyes? Will you open my ears? Will I have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying in the day that I'm living in? God, I want to know you. I want to know the power of your resurrection. You see, these, these religious leaders, they, they had a God. They, they loved God. They really did. But over the years, the thing had been eroded. This is what the Bible says in, Hebrew, in Hebrews chapter 2. It says, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward or a penalty, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Friend, the enemy sowed lies, but the Spirit of God is here today to open our ears, to open our understanding to what God has for us. You see, these people, all that happened is that they drifted away from the truth. They, they allowed an even an evil spirit to control them. In Revelation 3.14 it says, you know, that they thought they were doing what was right. That's one of the sad things is people really think they're doing what is right. They did not know, it says in, in Revelation 3.14, 
that they, that they had drifted away and that they were wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. You see, the sa- Satan didn't want this truth to, to be revealed. He, he, most of them didn't, be- well, the, fa- the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. The Pharisees didn't believe that he was the Christ that they were looking for. But you see, really, it was a spirit that didn't want this truth to be released. Because you see, when the truth that Jesus rose again, triumphant o'er his foes, the truth is that Jesus overpowered Satan. You see, th- that meant that Satan's grip on humanity was finished. Jesus, as he hung on the cross, he started to cry out these words, It is finished. Satan's grip on humanity is finished. I have paid the price. I have won the battle. Hallelujah. I have set my people free. Now they can rule and reign with me. Satan's grip on humanity was finished, ended. The price for our redemption was paid in full. That's an amazing thing. And Satan stirred up the religious to try to stop the truth from getting out. Praise God, it's out. Amen. Praise God, the word is out. He is alive. He's risen. And, and friend, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing for the church today, that we are to go out there and declare that Jesus is alive. He's touched our lives. He, he, is, he is, oh man, He is such a good God. He is such a wonderful Savior. I, I want to tell you this, if, friends, if we could really express, if we could really express the deep gratitude that is in our heart and the love that we have for our Savior, and what Jesus has really, really done for us. If, if we could just somehow or other express that, I know that a world out there would want to embrace the Savior. He is not trying to send everybody to hell. He is not a hard taskmaster. He is a loving God who gave his life for you and me. Amen. And over this next few minutes, I'm going to try to, to, to just speak about some things that, that what Jesus did for us. And I pray that you can take it on board and you can somehow or other grasp it. You see, Satan stirred up the religious leaders and, and, and you know, they, they sealed the tomb and put guards around the tomb. Satan didn't want Jesus getting out. You see, today, Jesus is the Word and Satan doesn't want the Word getting out. He has put a stone across the mouth of the church that the church has, has become quiet, sitting back, trying to be politically correct, try to do everything nice, trying not to upset people. Don't talk about the blood. People might be offended. Don't take up offerings. Don't do this. Don't do that. Friend, it's not a, the gospel is not a message of don'ts. It's a message of do. It's go into all the world and preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Speak in other tongues. Edify yourself. Oh man, I want to tell you, I I don't know, I just get a little bit excited from time to time, so please forgive me if I get excited this morning. Amen. Satan uh, stirred up those religious leaders. He didn't want it getting out. Satan, listen to this, was terrified of this dead man. He was terrified of him. I want to tell you today, Satan is terrified of you. He does not want you to rise up. He does not want you to know the power that God has invested in you. God, the devil does not want you to... If you can just stay silent, he's happy. Because really, he is terrified of the church. But I want to tell you, the church will rise. Amen. It will rise. Jesus said, I'm going to rise on the third day. The devil was terrified. Oh, praise God for that. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus is proof of Satan's defeat. Satan was defeated. When Jesus walked around the planet after after he'd gone to Hades, uh, it just proved that Satan was defeated. It's a proof of man's redemption. We used to sing a song, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed and I know I am. Let me just say this again. This means that Satan's grip on humanity is finished. It is over. Paid for in full. 
Satan tries to stir up the religious, tries to stir up those things. But I want to tell you, God is building His church. It also tells us today about God's legal right to make you and I new creatures. Old has passed away. I am a brand new man, born again, born of the Spirit. This is so very, very important for you to realize. I am not still that old sinner. I am not that old broken down thing there that, that couldn't help himself. I am a new creature in Jesus Christ. I've been filled with the power of God. We have the anointing over our lives and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. If you can rise up today, I want to tell you, you'll start to defeat the things that the enemy has tried to do in your life. God's legal right to make the believer a new creation. In Ephesians 1, 7 and 8, in Jesus we have redemption through his blood. Not through anything else. Not through the church that I go to. Though it might be a great church, I'm not knocking that. Please don't misunderstand me. It's got nothing to do with where, where I fellowship. But I have redemption today through his blood. Amen. Forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound. Abound. I want to say that again and again. Which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and understanding. Abound. It's not just a little trickle, but it's an abundance, amen. It's more than enough. I have more than enough of that precious blood washing over me. Satan has blinded the eyes of believers through religion, wrong teaching, and wrong thinking. Jesus said that we need to have our minds renewed. We need to start to speak. He said, whatever you say to this mountain, whatever you speak, it will be done for you. We've got to be able to rise up. I, I believe that Jesus would have been grieved to see the people he so loved. As he hung upon that cross, paying a price. The other week, I think I did a communion message that, that you know, he, he could have even said it as he hung there, as he watched the people snarling at him, gnashing their teeth at him, calling him all kinds of false things, horrible things. He could have said in his heart, well, this didn't work. It's not worth it. But I thank God that he didn't do that. I praise God that he didn't do that. It would have grieved him to see the people he so loved, the religious leaders he wanted to reveal himself to. See, when Jesus first came, he came to the church. He came to the synagogues. He came there to reveal himself to the leaders, but the leaders rejected him because they were full of this wrong thinking, wrong teaching. I know in my own heart there have been times there because of teaching that I've received over the years from good people. It sounded good at the time that stopped me from entering in, stopped me from really going forward until God kept persisting and persisting until all of a sudden the light came on and, and you grab hold of that truth and then God takes you to another level. God wants to take you to another level. He wanted to reveal himself to these religious leaders so they could lead the people in freedom. Freedom from Satan's grip. Satan has this world by the throat. We see the abortion rate. We see the marriage. And, and even as we look at different things, uh, the, the stuff that's going on in the world today. Husbands beating up their wives, little children sitting at the dining room table watching dad as he pours out his fury, his wrath, sitting there in anger. But unfortunately, a lot of those little boys are learning this is how you control your wife. They go on to do it themselves. Little girls being beat up, raped, messed up. We see... What's happening in the world? But I tell you what, it's time for the church to rise up. Amen. Jesus wanted to set the people free from Satan's grip. Now, see Satan stirring the crowd. They saw these religious leaders. Instead of supporting, standing up for Jesus, they're saying, crucify him, crucify him. 
How sad that would have been. I believe that the anger that he saw in those people, the hate, the deception, would have broken his heart. I wonder what Jesus does today as he looks at the church. Does he, what does he see? You see, I believe that there's a church within the church. I believe that there's a group of people that are beginning to stir within the church. I believe there's a group of people there that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. They want the truth. He saw all that going on, but it didn't stop him from loving them. Didn't stop him from loving them. He continued to love them. He continues to fight for them. He continues to protect them. Continues. I thank God that while I was a sinner, Jesus didn't stop loving me. I thank God that he kept loving me. All I needed, this old fellow, was to get born again. It is finished. No more to pay. We have our redemption. Today I can boldly stand here and I can declare, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed and I know I am. Do you know today if you're redeemed? Do you know that the blood has been paid, the price is paid for you? It's not, not something we have to wait for. It's not something we have to pray for. It's not something we have to ask for. And it's certainly not something that I have to pay for. The moment you are born again, Save, receive Jesus into your life, whatever you, term you use. At that moment, redemption is ours. Redemption is mine. Did I deserve it? No. No, but I thank God that I received it by faith. I received it because God wanted me to have it. Amen. Satan's dominion ends. Satan's Dominion is over. Finished. Now I can walk in the light, in the truth. Or I can walk in darkness or a lie. Truth is, we are free. My, my soul has escaped as a snare, out of the, as, as a bird rather. My soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. I was snared, but life and truth came in. Now I can walk in the light, or I can still allow the enemy to come and deceive me. The reality is, you are free. We now rule and reign with Christ. We rule and reign with Christ. But we, like Adam, we have a choice. We can choose Whatever. Fear is gone. It's gone. Hallelujah. I'm so glad it's gone. Fear is gone. Christ died in my place. He died for me. He went down into haze to lift me up, to lift you up above, to lift me up, to take me out of the miry clay, out of the mess, the brokenness, the despair. I know what my life was like before I got saved. I know what my marriage was like. I know what everything was like. I was there. But I want to tell you, Jesus came into my life. He redeemed me. He lifted me up. He said, ah, Neil, I want, to, I want to just come into your life. I want to be your friend. And I want to call you friend. Ephesians 2.6 It says, And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly place, in Christ Jesus. I want to ask you today, where are you sitting? Are you acting like a turkey or an eagle? A young man found an egg in the forest and he brought it home. He had a brood turkey sitting in his uh, chook yard or whatever it is. And he put the egg underneath the turkey and after a little while the, the egg hatched and out came this well, it wasn't a turkey, it was an eagle. <laughs> it was running, with the, running with, the, uh, with the turkeys. It was acting like a turkey, doing what turkeys do. And that's what I was doing. 
acting like a turkey. I was a turkey. Acting like an idiot. But somewhere or other one day this turkey, this, this eagle rather, looked up into the sky and he saw and he heard the scream of an eagle. Might have even been his mother. I don't know. Might have been his dad. But he heard that scream of the eagle as all the other turkeys ran to hide in fear. Something rose up within him. I thank you that when I heard the word of God, when I heard the word of God, something rose up inside me and I said, I want that. I want that. I, I don't want to be scratching around like a, like a turkey in the, in the muck. I want to soar like an eagle. I, I really most likely didn't say that because I didn't understand what, was, what God had made available to me. But I, I don't know, there's something inside me that wanted something more. And this eagle, this eagle chick as he's down there now, fully fed and growing, but running around the place not knowing who he was. All of a sudden, as he, as he puts out his wings, as he, and the wind began to blow, and as that wind began to blow, it started to pick him up, and he started to flap a little bit, and he picked him up a bit higher, and all of a sudden, he was loose from that cage. All of a sudden, now he's soaring. Now he's flapping. Now he can feel the breeze. Now he can feel the freedom. He's no longer a turkey. Friend, I am no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed and I know I am. Amen. I've been built to rule and reign in this life, not to, not to submit myself to some filthy devil. Where are you sitting? We were crucified with Him, died with Him. We were buried with Him. We suffered with Him. We were justified by Him. We were made alive with Him, conquered Satan with Him, and were raised together with Him. Father, lift us up where we belong. The resurrection of Jesus is proof of our victory over our enemy, Satan. Jesus triumphed over Him. It is proof that cannot be denied. Every person who received Jesus as Lord and Savior in the mind of God. Listen to this, please. Every person, every person that received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in the mind of God is a victor over Satan. You've got, to get, you've got to let this get into you. I, I've got to let it get into me so I can rise again, so I can rise above. In God's mind, when God looks at me, He doesn't see a miserable thing. He sees a victor. He sees somebody that's got potential. <laughs> potential to win. Potential to overcome. The potential to triumph. Jesus said in the Word, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's not easy to, sometimes to accept this truth, especially if you're being beat up, going through a difficult time. But friend, it is true all the same. It may not be easy, but it's still the truth. It is still the truth. When Jesus broke the curse of death, having conquered death, Satan and sin, it was victory. It was my victory. It was your victory. He did it for me. Our victory was in the victory of Jesus Christ. He wears the victor's crown. Colossians 3, 1 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. It also says in Matthew 6 verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God, but it goes on to say, and also seek righteousness. Now righteousness is a free gift. I said before, you can't buy it, you can't get hold of it, it's a free gift. But what it means is to go seeking to live right for God. Because you see, when you sin, the Bible says in Romans 8, it says, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who walk according to the Spirit. 
But if you walk according to the flesh, the devil comes and condemns you and pulls you down and you feel miserable and broken and smashed. Friend, we've got to seek after righteousness. We don't want to sin, so go for it. Don't let sin get in your heart. Resist sin. Resist it. Resist the temptations of the enemy and live for Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't, don't let it get around you. Seek first the kingdom of God. In Ephesians uh, 1, 20, 21, it says, And God has lifted the believer above all rule and authority and power and dominion, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. And he put all things in subjection under the believer's feet. He gave Christ, who was the head of the body, he gave Christ, who was the head of the body, to be master over all the forces of the universe. He is master. Jesus gave the believer legal right to use his name. He said, in my name, do this, in my name, lay hands on the sick, in my name, da-da-da, cast out devils, in my name. So Jesus gave us legal right to use his name. And he actually gave us power of attorney. That is a very, very powerful thing. Power of attorney it is so very, very powerful. If we could only just catch it. God gave me power of, a th- of attorney so that in the name of Jesus, every demonic power should obey me when I use that name. So friends, I don't know whether this is my first close or my second close. <laughs> So it's time to rise, stand up, shake off the dust and put on the armor of God. Go forth and conquer. Lift up those hands that hang down. You and Christ are more than conquerors. Not in yourself, but in Christ I am more than a conqueror. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. I would encourage you today, church, not a time just to say, oh, well, this, this thing has got me in lockdown. No, it's a time to find God. It's a time to, to ring up your friends, time to encourage people. It's a time to look into the realm of the Spirit. Set your th- mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are happening down here. Yes, the coronavirus, but I want to tell you, in the realm of the Spirit, there's something going on up there. And if you can look into the realm of the Spirit and see God moving by His Spirit, the angels of God are ready to go. All the portals of glory, all the patriarchs, all those that have ever died before, they're all up there shouting, come on, boys, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. They're, they're up there saying, come on, church, come on down there, come on, come on, come on, Queensland, come on, Sunshine Coast, come on, rise up. It's an amazing time that we're living in. Friend, if you don't know Jesus, oh, man, you're missing out on so much. You're missing out on so much. If you've never, ever, ever, ever come to that place, and, you know, I, I said it before, but, but my dad... He didn't, he, we were born, we were brought up in a, not in a church home. But we've, of course we've all got opinions. And he had an opinion about people who went to church. And, and he said, you know, people that go to church, and he was talking to me, didn't talk to me that much about things. But he said, people that go to church, Neil, they need a crutch. They're weak. They're weak people. So they need a crutch to get through. And I, I, I didn't know whether that was right or wrong, but I believed it. I thought he must know what he's talking about. You might have things like that in your mind. See, the church is this or that. No, friends, I found life. I found, I found joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I found peace. I found freedom and liberty. My marriage, I don't believe, would have lasted all that much longer the way we were going before I got born again. But Nancy and I just celebrated 60 years of marriage. It did go from wedlock to deadlock at one stage before we got born again. But Jesus, is, it, it come, it didn't, he said, I come to give you life. I come to give you life. Friend, you could give your life to Jesus right now. It is so simple. 
You don't have to join a church. You don't have to do this or you don't have to do that, which some people might say you have to do. You don't have to get your name written down on a roll. Might as well have it on a sausage roll <laughs> because it won't help you much. But what will help you is if you open up your heart and let the King of Glory come in, the one who loved you so much, the one who died for you, and say, Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you help me today? Would you save me? I believe that you're the Son of God and that you really did die for me. So I ask you to come in. I surrender to you today. Amen and amen. Father, I want to pray for people today that need that healing touch. A lot of people today are suffering. And, and Father, I, I just pray that, that Lord, your, your healing mercy, I pray, Lord, today that you will glorify your Son by stretching forth your hand over the community, over the people, my God, and heal them. Glorify your Son by healing the sick, touching people. Holy Spirit, we know that you're moving mightily. We know today that, Lord, that you're touching people. And Lord, we just give you all the praise for that. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Lord, today we love you. We worship you. Amen and amen. And church, until we can come together somewhere, we're just going to continue with these broadcasts. Um, this Sunday, uh, or next Sunday, whenever this comes on, I'm not too sure now, Greg will be preaching uh, at 10 a.m. through TBN Pacific, so make sure you find out how to get onto that. Uh, and I know that you'll be thoroughly blessed. Just want to say how much Nancy and I love you and care for you, and just want to see you just triumph over the works of the enemy. Love you. God bless you. Till we meet again. Amen.